Hi everybody, I hope you can <laughs> see me now. Um, let me go ahead and address those in the old chat. Let me see. Um, we tried connecting for a few minutes and I think YouTube is being overwhelmed right now and having a lot of issues. Um, hold on, let me go ahead and let those know. Thanks for being patient, folks. Okay. Um, yeah, our Wi-Fi is fine. Um, I think YouTube is just getting overwhelmed these days. Let me see if I can if I can find our our video up here. Okay, there we are. All right, I'm gonna just wait for a few minutes for folks to migrate on over. All right, I'm sorry I missed a lot of your comments. Um, those of you who were those of you who were waiting. Go ahead and mute myself. Um, not sure what happened there. That's the first time that's happened. I, again, I think just it's a rainy gray day here. Lots of people on YouTube. Um, it's interesting. The last several times, last three, four weeks that I've done the live, it's taken more than 20 hours for the entire video to render and to be available to see with comments if you don't catch it live. So that just tells me that a lot of people are doing what we're doing and, um, Anyway, well, I hope you're doing well. Let me go ahead and, and check every check in with the, the chat. Um, did not expect that glitch. Um, hey, Swati, just wanted to say hi. She says, happy Friday from L.A. Yes, glad the technical issues got resolved. Yeah, I mean, we're living in a world where we can do all kinds of crazy things. But, uh, yeah, sometimes it doesn't always work the way we wish. Um, Amarina, good morning. Thank you for joining us. And Regine? from France. Wow. Bonjour, my friend. Um, and Ann Butler, thank you for listening in while she's at work. And I'm going to go ahead and move my computer over here so I'm not always looking to the side. Um, and Archer Nace, thank you for joining us. And Carol and Carlene Roberts from Tucson. Uh, let's Oh, we got a lot of people coming over. Thank you for, for finding me, guys, and for, for persisting with this um, technical issue. And Kathy Breyer, so she has me on her phone. Thank you, Kathy, for watching. And Kathleen Champ, good to see you. And, and jo Jocelyn from Los Angeles. Or I'm, I'm sorry, Jack, Jacqueline. I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name, sweetheart. Oof, sorry about that. And is it Morinana from, from Montana? Um, and Marilyn from Kansas. Wow. And, and hi, Kelly. Just say hi back to you there. And we have Shirley from Monroe, Michigan. And Brenda Rayburn from Virginia. She says, hope you're doing well. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Brenda. Happy Mother's Day to you all, too, in, in advance. Um, you know, with all these, you know, just every day is the same. It's just, oh, yeah, holidays come up and birthdays come and go. And kind of kind of strange. But, you know, hopefully that will be, you know, changing in the near future. Uh, let's see, Swati. Uh, Oh, okay, Jacqueline, both of you in L.A., yes. Um, and Denise from West Virginia, thank you for, for uh, joining me, Denise. Uh, let's see who else we have. Brett's mom, good to see you. And um, Cheryl Mosher, she says, I think I have problems with the tension and then forget where I am. I'm a beginner. Ah, Cheryl, thank you for joining us. Yep, the handhold is everything about yarn, guys. The non-dominant hand, how you hold that yarn, that can make or break your crochet career. And that's why when I do t tutorials, I, I try to spend a lot of time on that just to say, take the time to get it. I, it whatever you do is going to feel weird at first when you learn to crochet. But yeah, you're right, Cheryl. Just hang in there with it, though. Give it some time. It, it'll, it'll get better. Um, and let's see, who do we have... Um, Carlene Roberts says, got called off from work so I can finally join you live. Yay. I hope that's a good thing. I know a lot of people are unemployed now and those numbers are growing in the U.S. Um, lots of things to trust God for these days. Um, and Rosie King from, from the U.K., thank you for joining me. I was actually a little chilly this morning. I was wearing my jacket I got at Cambridge from the U.K., this morning and I went ahead and went to my, uh, went to my scarf, but, um, 
I'm doing okay, but uh, I may have to grab that jacket if it doesn't warm up in a little bit. Um, and I think we do have our heat off just so that it's not too noisy when it kicks in. Um, we have Nancy from Woodfin, North Carolina. Um, Bobby says, I, the crafty Kentuckian, I started to freak out. I was like, wait, what's wrong? Yeah, me too, Bobby. <laughs> I were like, okay, you know, for some reason I set this up about an hour and a half ago so that people could, you know, see it. It'll be in their feed so that you don't try to, as an extra way to help you remember. Um, but I don't know what happened. I've done that every week in the past. And, um, I, I think, I think YouTube just, I think just, um, they're doing a lot. They, they have high volume and I think that's probably the issue there uh let's see we have Wanda Wyatt hey Wanda hope you're staying safe out there on the road she says we'll be heading to Kansas City Missouri this afternoon wow stay safe my friend um and we have crochet mama says good evening from Germany and my crochet garden or garden crochet sorry I'm the dialectic there for a minute um thank you for joining us all the way from Germany wow um, actually it's been about seven years or six years, 2013, seven years, correct? Yeah, seven years, seven years ago this week, we were actually in Europe with our family celebrating. Um, it was back then it was my husband and my 25th anniversary and, um, 50 birth, 50 year old birthday celebration. And yeah, 57, ooh, getting old. Um, so we just had, we've been looking at a lot of pictures from Germany and, and Paris and places like that. And uh, it's hard to believe it's been that long. That was the only time, or first time, a lot of my kids had even been on an airplane before. And it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful trip. It was a total surprise to me. I didn't know it was going to happen until about a week and a half before we left. My husband and, and daughter Becky, our administrator, kept it a total secret from me. I mean, I guess I'm a little dense when it comes to some things, but I just would never assume that my husband would, you know, plan something like that, but he had been planning it for years. And so anyway, it was just kind of the last, the first big trip, last big trip that we did again, first time, I think three of my kids had ever even flown. And, um, and it was the beginning of you know, the time where the family kind of splits and goes their separate ways because of college and age and everything. And that was kind of the last time that we were really together, living in the same household. And so it was just kind of a, a time before, you know, things were really going to change. And, you know, once your kids start moving away from home, things do get different. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the next season. And so it was just a wonderful way to end the season being in the home. Um, we even had a year or two where we had five teenagers in the house. And whew, that was a lot of fun. And I really do mean fun. Um, I know people freak out about thinking about that possibility, but um, I just love, we just love being together. And even as I'm speaking now, my daughter Hannah's on some kind of a game. I can't remember. I don't even know what it's called, but my kids are just connecting with each other. If they can't be working there, they still are connecting with each other, which I think is amazing. And, and their sibling, their, um, their, their spouses, um, we have two spouses now, two kids married. So even they're kind of involved in that. And it just, it just really blesses me to see that, they want to be together. <laughs> and um, anyway, that's a little bit of a divergent thought there, but um, missed a lot of comments saying that. Um, so you have Rosie King from the UK. I think I already said hi, but, but hi, Rosie. Thank you for, I think that's the UK that got me off on that little tangent there, but thank you for posting that. Um, and Gail is in the chat and um, Cheryl Mosher says, hope you are doing, hope you're doing well. Yep. By the grace of God, we are doing very well. Thank you, Cheryl. Hope you all are doing well, too. Um, and Nancy from Woodfin, North Carolina, welcome. And um, I think I'm already repeating that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just a little slow this morning. I got a little distracted with that technical glitch. Um, so we have Judy from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um Kathy Breyer says thumbs up for giving, for, yeah, thank you. Yeah, reminder, that's a good reminder, Kathy. Yeah, if you could give me a thumbs up, that would be great now that we're actually up and rolling. And um, if you've never been to my channel before, um, if this is your first time, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I know it's a lot of admin stuff, but um, that way you won't miss any of the new 
videos that are coming your way. And I do have some interesting things coming. And um, actually, let me go ahead and start with that. Um, well, before I go into that, I hope you all found the, the Bonnie Bay Bond Bond blanket. I hope you found that video okay. This is this is the the blanket behind me here. Um, had a lot of fun putting this together. Video one shows you how to make the squares, and they're all made the same. And once you do 42 of those, then you connect them together with the lacing, and that video will be coming on Monday, then the this coming Monday. Um, and I, I expect that no one's going to have all the squares done, but I'm just releasing them one per week um, just so that you have it there when you do get the time to put it together for those of you who are working on that. Now, um, I have good news um, from the ladies at um, Good Loops Yarn. It is starting to open up. I know that the kits for this have, I think, are officially sold out, but there are options you can buy other, you know, other ways you can buy um, other yarn from them. And I wanted to show you my goodie bag. I got a bag of squish from Stephanie this week. Thank you, Stephanie. And um, I wanted to show you the two colors that I got. This is for a future project. Um, I had one project in mind when I ordered this, but I, I may, I have the right to change my mind, right? I may actually change, but I... Um, I bought some of the EcoFusion. This is the yarn that has the bamboo and cotton. I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but there are little flecks of, uh, little little shiny flecks here and there in this yarn. And it's really, really, really nice. I'm really looking forward to using it. I've never crocheted with this, so I'll have to give you my opinion once I get going on a project. I'm gonna go ahead and spill the beans a little bit. I have in mind a baby blanket for this, and it'll be kind of a very special baby blanket. It's gonna be a special pattern with, with new cabling ideas that I haven't used yet, or haven't shown you all yet, but um, still haven't designed it totally. But I wanted to go ahead and get my yarn for that um, while I can. And as long as that yarn is sitting on my table, it's going to be calling my name and telling me to get busy and to be thinking about these things. So that's kind of a little bit about my mojo, how I like to operate. I don't like to have everything put away neatly because if I do that, then I don't see what I have. I like to leave stuff out and reminding me that, oh yeah, I need to do that. Um, so Martha Stewart does not live here, thank God, because she would go crazy um, <laughs> because I leave things out and about in my again, in my studio and in other places too, just so I can work and be inspired constantly. All right. Um, so what I was going to say is, I guess, concerning this blanket, if you wanted to use the EcoFusion, you can. And each of these balls makes between four and five squares. I, I believe the yardage works out to about five, but I, I would need to check my math on that. I do mention it in the video. I'm very specific there. My mind is working better because I'm using notes when I'm speaking about this from there. Um, now, if you don't want to get this yarn, um, one of the issues with this right now is that um, the kits are sold out, but the good news is South Africa is starting to open, and Jennifer, who, in, who helps work with Stephanie to import this um, from her place in Pretoria, um, is is working hard. I think they are getting a shipment out or have gotten a shipment at least sent. So it's just a matter now of, of getting it from South Africa to here, which is in New Mexico, um, where, where it is shipped from. So anyway, all I have to say is it, there's a very good possibility that, that the supplies will, will, will be available on that particular yarn. Now, if you wanted to use something else, you are totally free to use whatever you want, as always. But um, this can also be a very good scrap gan. Um, and you can even use a different size yarn if you wanted to use all acrylic. You can try that. Um, a lot of people I know have told me that they are doing that, which is fine. Make sure you upsize your hook. Make sure that you, you make the hook fit your yarn, whatever you're using. I wouldn't recommend super thick yarn. I would not recommend bulky weight yarn for this. I would go no thicker than worsted weight. Um, 
I, I really do think if you can use a cotton DK weight or even um, a, low, a, a lighter weight yarn that you will like the product a lot better especially with the, the way it's connected with the lace. You're going to get a lot more drape if you use a bamboo, cotton kind of natural fiber. Um, but again, you can use whatever, whatever you want. Um, I also have another yarn that I recommend on the video for the Bon Bon Blanket. Um, Knit Picks has a really nice, um, it's, a, it's a number two weight cotton. It's a sport weight cotton that I've used for ponchos in the past. In fact, let me show you this. Um, this is actually another, this is a design on my site. Um, this is the summer cabled, summer cabled poncho, which is a really nice thing to wear. I've, I've worn this um, many times. And, and this is made of a nice Pima cotton that Knit Picks has. And the reason I even mentioned Knit Picks is I know a lot of you are very economically minded and um, they have some of the highest quality for a bargain price that I know. So um, anyway, so this, the Pima cotton, and I, I forget the name of the other, but they do have, you know, just look for the, the DK um, weight cotton. Oh, yeah, so you, you all like that, huh? Um, and, and by the way, if you just look up, go to my homepage and where the little, the little spy glasses, you know, the little search bar, just write um, some, well, actually, I put the link in the video description when I set this video up initially, but of course we had to transition to a different <laughs> video because of technical issues, but I will put that in later. Okay, I had all my all my links set up and ready to go and then stuff happened technically. But, um, but if you go to my search bar in that case um, and just summer cable poncho and it's a four video series, it's, it's not that difficult. I just broke it down into shorter videos and I do have that there for right-handed and left-handed. It's a great thing you can just, you, know, you can ball it up, you know, you know, stick it in your bag. And when you go into, hopefully we'll be able to go into restaurants this summer and where the air conditioning is cold, even in Florida, um, and just, you know, put the poncho on and it really, really helps to keep you from getting too cold, especially in the summertime or, you know, in the evening when things kind of drop out. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, uh, I wanted to also let you know, okay, um, duh, 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 duh. got a bunch of new comments coming in there. Um, the Crafty Kentuckian, where did that comment go? Uh, I just got like a thousand comments coming in at once here. Um, Bobby, the Crafty Kentuckian wanted me to share with you all that he got a brand new um, chair. He got a brand new wheelchair that's motorized now and I could not be more happy for him. I'm so excited for him. Here he goes. I'm a proud owner of an electric, a motorized chair would probably be a better way. Uh, yeah, electric chair. Yay, just got it delivered an hour or so. That is great, Bobby. That is so wonderful. Um, I hope you hope you don't get don't get any speeding ticket tickets with that friend. Um, we've been going back and forth about this for for a while. He, he told me about this yesterday, and um, I'm so excited for you. Um, well, anyway, Tina from Vermont, say hi to Tina. I'm catching up. I'm way behind here, and um, so good to see you all encouraging one another. And and Tammy H, thank you for the Happy Mother's Day wish. Happy Mother's Day to you too. And to all you moms out there. And we have Bramble Bear from Maine. Thank you for your blessings there. And and Yushi from Germany. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, all right. I see Esther's in the chat. Hey, Esther. Thank you for joining us. We need to talk. I'm not sure what I need to do about this yarn with you. I need to, we need to, um, I found some more this week. So um, we'll need to email back and forth about that. And um, Cheryl says she's from Toronto, Ontario. Wonderful. Um, I think that's where we landed last. Actually, yeah, last summer in June, we flew Air Canada to to Seoul, Korea, and we actually went through Toronto. And that was the only time I've ever been to Toronto. Of course, I didn't get to leave the airport, but I got to go to Toronto for about 30 minutes <laughs> on my way back home. And actually on the way from, 
from 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 Washington, Toronto to Seoul. Quite an interesting journey. I actually flew over the the North Pole on the way. Um, we have is it Mica Mica from Southern California, and um, let's see. Da, da, da. We have lots of people greeting each other. So so cool. That's funny. Bobby's saying he's trying to learn to drive a wheelchair with his left hand. Good luck with that. It'd be like driving in the UK, Bobby. <laughs> Everything is the opposite of the way it is in the US. Whenever you drive in the UK or, or, or Ireland, um, very, very different. Especially when you're driving a standard transmission. My husband got to do that back in 2012. Very exciting times for both of us. <laughs> oh boy, and those stone walls come at you fast. Um, let's see, we have Johnny's in the chat. Hey Johnny, I hope you're enjoying some good sunshine from the Sunshine State. Please send us some. We don't have any sunshine today. We're going to have rain for the next two days, which we need. But um, I just miss Florida. I miss those beautiful sunny days. And even when you get rain in Florida, if you just wait 10 or 15 minutes, the weather changes and the sun comes right back out. It's really nice there. Um, we have Bev from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Thank you for joining us, Bev. And um, please forgive me all for, I'm, I'm so far behind here. Um, and Judy says, I just watched the Bon Bon video and it looks like it's going to be fun. Can't wait to get started. Have a blessed and happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Judy. That's very kind of you. Um, you too. Um, I hope I hope you do enjoy the baby the, the Bon Bon blanket. And you know, this is not necessarily a project that you're going to want to like zoom through and rush through because quite honestly, if I do the same thing over and over again, it does can get a little boring so I mean I don't want this to get redundant and boring for you all I mean if you have other things by all means do that but um I don't want you to feel pressure that because the next video is coming out that you have to be done with the first video on all 42 squares I mean I don't work that way I mean it took me probably a month to get get all my squares done and I did it at a leisurely rate so I really hope that this is project is something that you know, you can come back to and it'll bless you and, you know, just fill some time here and there. Um, you know, maybe give you a relief from something that might be a little more complicated. Um, so anyway, just my take on that. But um, let's see. Jacqueline says that they're having a heat wave in L.A. Wow. I forgot what that even felt like, Jacqueline. <laughs> um, I was in South Carolina for for at least six weeks the last time I was down there and I was in shorts and t-shirts. I mean, it was hot. It, it got up into the eighties and, and even to 90 one day and then moved, came back home to Maryland. And I still have yet to get into my capris and, and short sleeves. I think I was in short sleeves one day last week. And that was because I was walking up and down the hill hauling, um, yard stuff from doing yard work and tree cutting. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a cool time here. It's going to be in the I think the fifties for the high today, and in the forties for tomorrow. Ugh. Send us some of that warm weather. You too, Becky. Send some of that warm weather up our way. Um, and we have creations by Jax. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for your kind comment, Kathy um, Burgess. Um, the shawl is that the the poncho is so easy to make, um, and it fits a variety of sizes too. Um, we have Julie Nicholson for another Kentuckian. Thank you. Yeah, thank the, great to have you in the chat. Beautiful, beautiful state. Um, my best friend and her family are, are well, my best friend is buried there, but um, her family is in, in um, Winchester, Kentucky. Beautiful, beautiful area. Um, and Vicki Foxen, thank you for your kind wishes um, from, is it Mandura, Washington? Wow. And we have Brenda. It's good to see you, Brenda. Thank you for, for um, commenting. And Annie from Canada. And Christine Jones from Alaska. Oh, boy. I should stop complaining about the cold weather then. We've got somebody from Alaska. I'm sure you can top anything we've got here. Um, and Bobby says, you're 57. Yes. Thank you for your kind comment, Bobby. Yes, um, Yep, and not, not afraid to let people know either. Um, 
and I tell you, I used to tell people once I turn 50, life doesn't start to your 50 because once you turn 50, you don't care anymore about things that would inhibit you and make you all worried, you know, about what people think, you know, I, for some reason, the magical 50 number came and I'm just like, I'm ready to live now and I'm not going to live in the shadow of what other people think I should be doing and saying. I mean, I mean that in a good way. So, um, that's, yeah, that's my mojo. Whoop, and my thing just came undone. Oh, brother. Coming undone at the seams here. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. I can feel it sliding out. It's not really designed to be a shawl pin, but I'm insisting that I want to use this as a shawl pin. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Suzanne Walker. Hey, Suzanne. It says, hello from to all from Chile, Central Illinois. Oh, I bet you are cold. Starting my first square of the bonbon blanket today. Happy Mother's Day to all. Thank you, Suzanne. That is so kind. I still I think about you every time I look at my sign, that, that little thing that you made for me. I've got it framed. and um, Just a great reminder of, of the good folks that, that you all are out there. Um, Kathy Breyer says she doesn't get to see her daughter. She's 17 hours away. Oh, that would be a bummer, Kathy. Um, and hi to Jay from Germany. And um, let's see. Um, wow, we got some names I am not going to be able to pronounce. Kumania from Kansas. New to your channel. Okay, thank you for joining us. I hope I didn't ruin your name there. That's such a beautiful name. Is it Kumani, if I'm saying that right? Um, and I see another name right below that. I Mukwadas. Um saying happy mother's day thank you so much and marino thank you it looks like german is it guten abend am i saying that right but um welcome to you thank you for for joining us um and they said it's snowing in michigan wow and hello from brampton hi debbie thanks for joining us and um well, let me go ahead and see what else I got on my sheet here. I, I just love seeing all, all your comments and everything. And just to let you know, if I don't get a chance to to say hey to you, I am reading them once I go offline here. Uh, another not, Susan B., another happy Mother's Day weekend. Um, well, anyway, I wanted to show you real quick some things that are, I'll tell you about a couple things that are coming to my channel very soon. Of course, this coming Monday will be the Bon Bon Blanket Part 2. And after that, I have a video. Many of you have asked me, or some of you, I think some of the newer people have asked, well, how do I, how do you read um, crochet patterns? They, they want help and how to do that. And I did put together a little video. It's a very short video, um, but I think it's adequate to get you started on how to read crochet patterns. It's very simple. I use big flashcards, and um, anyway, that's coming in two weeks. But I want to tell you about another video that's already on my channel if you really, really, really want to learn how to start reading crochet patterns. If you go to that search bar, again, I had this link all lined up in the video description, but I'm gonna have to go in and redo that once we're done um, with the live. But there is a video called a Be Easy Beginners round dishcloth and if you put that in the search bar on my home page once we're done here you can look up that video and let's see where are the round dishcloths hmm hold on a second are they there no they're not there I reorganized my room and I can't find a thing but anyway, there is a round dishcloth. It's made up of single crochets and it teaches you how to crochet in the round using a stitch marker. And I had a stitch marker. Well, anyway, cleaned up. Don't ever clean up, guys, because you won't be able to find a thing. But um, using a stitch marker and I will show you how to read a pattern and I actually go from the pattern, I show the pattern and then I show you what it looks like when you crochet it. We go back and forth. Um, so if you're really proficient at reading patterns, you might be bored to tears, but if you've never read a crochet pattern, that might help you. That's already up on my channel for right and left handers, okay? So you can just take a look at that because in this video that's coming out on how to read crochet patterns, 
points you, once that video is done, I tell you, go ahead and look at this video because that will take you by the hand step by step in how to do that. Of course, you're not going to know learn every single term there is, but it's a start and you'll understand just the, the process um, and um, hopefully will give you some confidence in how to go further and to you know add to your vocabulary. Um, so that's coming. And this is this is also coming in three weeks. I am real excited about this one. This is a cabled dishcloth. And um, these are very simple knit cables. This is a knit project. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm dabbling on the dark side, guys. I'm really enjoying it, by the way. Um, my first love will always be crochet, but I am learning a lot and learning fast on knit, and I am not afraid of this anymore. Um, and uh, this, this came together very quickly. I used, you know, the, the spool of cotton that you can get from Michael's or Joann's, even Walmart has, has this stuff. And I like buying it like this because I can get a lot of dishcloths off of these. And I make these for gifts a lot um, for people at church and things like that. You know, when I have to make a lot of gifts quickly, um, these are great. And these can, you know, whether crocheted or knit, can, can stay in your kitchen. Whoops, that's the wrong side. Stay in your kitchen forever. And um, the color may fade with use, but, you know, they they are really great. I, I use them every day. I usually have some that Becky made me when she was a beginner crocheter. And I still use those to clean, you know, pots and pans, um, wipe the counters down, and things like that. They're really great. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I need to do. I think I've just about covered my agenda. Let me let me just check and see if there are any questions. Let me see, Becky, do I have? Okay, if there are any questions, Becky, can you please text me and let me know? Um, we have, is it Sahar from Garland, Texas? Say hi, Take, hi to you, Sahar. And um, thank you, Sherry, for your kind words there. Um, we have Marilyn. She said, my bonbon yarn just came in. So guess what I'm starting this weekend? Oh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this one, Marilyn. I really do. Um, it looks like Bobby's talking about his chair. He's trying to get used to it. Take your time on that, Bobby. Be careful. Um, wow. And Archerney said she got, got the kit and yarn in less than five days from Lovecraft. Well, good for you. I'm guessing you're talking about the colorful cables yarn. Um, that's the only one that I'm aware of that I use from them, but I'm still waiting on some yarn. I'm really hoping they get they get restocked soon. I'm actually working on a new design for you guys for the summer. I am like this close to finishing it, but I ran out of yarn. So I'm waiting on one particular color and I've been waiting for about six weeks. So I'm really hoping that the US supply chain gets supplied very soon. Everything, you know, is still pretty disrupted. Um, Kathy Breyer says, I just bought four balls of the Eco Cotton for dishcloths. Very nice cotton. Good Loops has beautiful yarn. Shipping is quick. Yes, it is, Kathy. It's a very small operation, by the way. It's one person, and she's my friend. And um, she's very, very good at what she does. And that's why, you know, this disruption has nothing to do with anybody's fault. It's just the way the world is right now. But uh, I'm glad that you got your order quickly. Um, and Johnny says, happy that my colorful throw is done. Ordered yarn today for the rug, which I'm making a wall hanging. Wow. Well, that's great. I'm um, looking forward to seeing that. And Johnny, your, your, um, your project was beautiful. Um, I liked the colors and everything. It looked very nice. Um, and for those of you who want to see more of those, there is a video on this channel um, that shows over, I think there's over 50 pictures of different Afghans that many just like you crocheted for the Colorful Cables Throw Project. And if you want to see more or learn more or look at Johnny's picture, um, you can go to, on Facebook, you can go to the Colorful Cables Throw uh, Facebook page which I'm also adding 
um, and Bon Bon and, and Bonnie Bay's Bon Bon blanket. But that's a mouthful. Um, to that same page. So if those of you who are working on the Bon Bon blanket, if you want to upload pictures to that, the, the, um, the, basically it's an Afghan page for my channel or, or for, for my Facebook page, please do. Even if it's just, even if it's just one square or if you have a question. And actually there was an excellent question that I believe it was Regine had. She sent it to me this morning on Facebook that she was getting some holes as she crochets around, there are some places where you do have some holes that might be slightly larger than others, and that's normal. I mean, I have that throughout my afghan, but the good news is when once you put this like once you put this all together, you really don't notice it at all. And um, the way the way the yarn, you know, uh, when you block it and everything, I mean, they're gonna some holes are gonna be bigger than others, but yeah, that didn't bother me too much when I was making that um, and she does have a solution she, she suggested doing a row of single crochet first before you begin the pattern you can do that but I'm afraid that's gonna make you run out of yarn if you're using the bonbons themselves um, I didn't have enough yarn to do that extra row consistently um, but even without I liked it just fine um, and also if you do that extra row it's not gonna be exactly square so um, we do talk about issues like that, or if you have questions you have, you can talk about that on the Facebook page at length. And, um, you know, you can also see what other people are doing and, and you know, any issues they may be having. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Hi, Marsha. Thank you for your comment there. Um, and Susan B. says she's going to be using Caron Simply Soft. Yeah, that has that has enough drape. I think you'll be good with that, Susan. Um, just make sure you up upsize your hook. That would you know be helpful. Um, let's see. Oh, we have Lazy Linda. She's like, is there a pattern for the bonbon afghan? Yes, there is. Um, it's in my Lovecrafts.com store, online store. Again, I will put those videos in the video description. Because of that technical glitch we had earlier, nothing is there currently. Um, but I'll have to go in after we're done here. I will update that. Um, and Charlene Lucas says, Hi, Bonnie. Thanks so much for the pattern book. She says, If not for you and your wonderful tutorials, I would be lost. Praying for you, your family, and all in the group. Thank you so much, Charlene. That That is so sweet of you to say. And I, you know, I'm, I'm speechless when people say they're praying for me. That really... You know, that's like the highest honor or the highest kindness, I think, that you can do for somebody. Thank you so much for, for doing that. Um, let's see. Do I have a pattern for the shawl I am wearing? Okay, which shawl is this? Actually, I, I do, and it's in my on my homepage. Um, that was another thing I was going to talk about. I didn't write it down, but um, let me go ahead and talk about that. Here is another version of the same shawl. And with these, you can make them as long or as short as you want. Um, here is another version. These are asymmetrical shawls, and they have you know, cables. Oops, that's the back side. <laughs> okay. That, this looks better. This is you know the end. And the way I did this one is I put a couple of, well, I put a couple buttons on here. So that I could, I can actually, there are no buttonholes, but there's enough space in these cables. You can just button them closed if you don't want to use a, um, a shawl pin. But um, this is the honeycomb. I believe it's the honeycomb. Well, there's some one similar to this. It's the honeycomb scarf. It's on my channel. The yarn doesn't look anything like this. It's a variegated yarn um, that I used that from Knit Crate. It was a pattern I originally did for Knit Crate. And I wanted to show you that this is the, the, um, the one I made originally, and this is actually made from leftover yarns from other scarf and other projects. And I wanted to give you an idea for those of you who you know, maybe have a lot of sock weight or fingering weight, which is um, a number one weight yarn, very thin. I know you've seen me wear this scarf a lot with... Um, 
this is some of my really nice yarn that I picked up when I was in Australia. And um, so this is what I had left over. So what I do is I collect all of these yarns of the same weight. And now these are wool or wool alpaca blends. And I've got a lot of you know different colors left over. This is some knit crate yarn that was left over from a project that I made with that. Um, here's a little bit of baby alpaca of a, the similar weight. A little bit here, and here's some sparkly yarn. So what I'm suggesting, what you could do, is you could do that honeycomb um, patterned scarf, but you see the way I did the stripes? I mean, you can make your stripes smaller or larger, but um, use your leftover yarn on the stripes. It just, you know, start... Um, because I usually start start these from this end and then and then it grows as you go. So if you only have a little bit of, of um, let's say I only have a tiny bit of this, you know, maybe I could start the end with that color. And you can make, you know, a rainbow of, you know, any number of colors. Um, they don't have to match even. I think that makes it more interesting when they don't. Um, so here's here's some more this lightweight yarn. And I made a, a, a shawl. Becky, you'll recognize this. This is some of my Lang Merino. This is the yarn that I made. A, um, I had some special birthday money and I blessed myself with years ago and made a shawl that I've worn to both of my children's weddings. And I don't know if you can see, but they're tiny, tiny little um, sequins. And these are so small, but they catch the light in just a little bit. And they're not, they're not real big and tacky at all. They're, they're very small and petite. And um, I just love the shawl. It, it, it made a beautiful, beautiful shawl. But you can use, you know, and, and that shawl, do I have that pattern? I believe that shawl was actually uh, in a Crochet World magazine. Um, so I don't have the rights to that one, I don't think. But, but anyway, so, you know, you can mix and match all these leftovers and, and make a beautiful striped shawl. Because, I mean, there's no way I'm going to throw, you know, this, this out. I mean, this is amazing yarn, but it's just not enough to do anything with. But you can make a nice scarf. So, anyway, I'll give you some ideas there. And I think, I think I've gone through my agenda, but I do want to make sure that I haven't left anybody out here. Um... And yeah, Denise says, I do have leftover knit crate yarn. Yeah, I, I do too. And, and I love having this stuff on hand because um, I, you know, sometimes I just don't know what I want and, and I'll, I'll pull from some of the older stash that came in the mail and I didn't know what to do with. And now I do. So I can just go to that. And um, especially now that we're homebound, I don't have to go out and go shopping or anything. I, I've got it right here. So I can just pull from my stash and, and go to town on it. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, my knit crate box for April is in South Carolina. So Becky has it. We haven't opened it yet, but once I get that from South Carolina, because um, I basically deferred all my shipments to there because that's where I was living for a time. Um, so I will catch up on those with you. Um, but but for those of you who don't know what knit crate is, it's um it's um uh, it's like a monthly yarn club thing that you can quit at any time and it's wonderful. And I'll put the links for that in the in the video description below in case you're interested. But um, I'll talk more about that another time. Um, we have um, Manon says, good morning, good afternoon, Bonnie. I'm from Drummondville, Quebec, and we have some snow this morning. I have a request. Could it be possible to do a tutu for a co cocoon, please? Hmm. That's, that's a good request, man. I've never made a cocoon. Um, um, although I could, uh, I could point you to where you could learn. I'll have to look into that. Let me, let me get back to you on that. I'll have to write that down. Um, and Patsy's crochet. Good morning. She's like, how are you doing well by the grace of God, Patsy? Um, and Jackie wants to know how many blocks are in the Bonbon Afghan. It, there are 42 the way I did mine, and that afghan is 38 inches by 44. It's more like a great lap blanket, um, or it'd be a great blanket to cuddle with somebody. 
Um, it's not exactly a, you know, like a bedspread. It's not real huge. Um, but if you are making it out of your own stash, you can honestly use, make them as many as you want. You can make them to be, you know, a bed covering if you want. It's really all up to you. And when I show you how to connect it, you'll see that you're free to do whatever you, you want. Um, uh, Cynthia wants to know, will you be doing a video on the large round rug you showed recently? And the answer is yes. I am just waiting for that male person to come bring me my yarn from Lion Brand. It's already been shipped. I'm just waiting for it to be delivered. As soon as that starts, I'm going to begin right away. Um, I'm also working on two other items. Um, I'm working on the bag, the cabled bag. Started working on that this week. And um, as soon as that yarn comes, that's the next in line is to get, get those cranked out. Probably won't be available until mid-June or after. i not sure. I have to look at the schedule, but um, depending on when the yarn arrives, I'm hoping it'll be here by then. And I'll get to work on that as soon as I can. Um, all right. Well, I wanted to... Okay, I wanted to read something to you that... Um, I, my husband read to our family um, on this past Sunday. I find out where, da, 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 find out where the passage starts. Okay, give me a second here. I should have highlighted this, but I did not. All right, well, let me go ahead. I'm gonna pull something else up here. Um, La, la, la. Okay. Give me one second, guys. I'm getting my act together. Matthew 11. Okay. Okay. Um, this past Sunday, or every Sunday, our pastor, one of our pastors will send us um, kind of like a little study that we go over together as a family. And um, so my husband read this um, with us, and I wanted to read it to you because it really affected me, and I was just really encouraged by this. And um, I hope it encourages you too. And if, if you want to read more, read the entire study. I am going to put a link in the video description once once this video is done, I'm going to go ahead and update. So if you're looking for all these links that I'm talking about, they will be there. Give me about 15 minutes once this video is done and they will be available. I promise you. <laughs> um, but in Matthew 11 verses 28 through 30, um, this is Jesus speaking. He says, come to me all who are all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, I just love, these are some of the most favorite um, encouraging verses in the Bible for me. But um, I, I wanted to read you, especially what my um, pastor, one of my pastors, Devin Coughlin, he gave me permission to share this link and, and um, said it would be fine to share that with everybody. It's, it's a church link, so I hope that doesn't offend anybody. And if it does, I'm sorry, but this is who I am and this is the way I roll. Um, but he, his, these are Devin's words. He says, this passage begins with an invitation. Come to me. This is where remembering the goodness of God is for us begins by coming. There's not an electric shock we get to wake us up or a secret code we need to unlock our access. Jesus invites us to come. Notice who this invitation goes to. Jesus does not say, come to me if you are rich. He does not say, come to me if you are super smart. It's not come to me if you have it all figured out or if you have it all together. What does he say? Hmm. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. 
is the invitation of Jesus is a broad and universal call that goes out to all who are tired and troubled. And I suspect that's a lot of, a lot of you. I mean, it's definitely us every, every so often. Those who labor are those who are weary. Those who are heavy laden are weighed down by their burdens. Jesus does not qualify why one might be tired or burdened. He simply invites all to come. And um, perhaps this is you, and to some extent, it's all of us. As we face questions and unknowns, disappointments, failures, and sin, disease, decay, and death, we are burdened and weary. Maybe you're more aware of this weariness now during this unusual season. Perhaps you're weighed down by concerns about the economic fallout of this pandemic. Maybe you're distressed about the health and well-being of a loved one. Maybe you're a mother who's exhausted as you care for your children 24-7 with no place to go. Or perhaps you're just worried about how much everyone else seems to be worried. Weighed down, distressed, exhausted, worried, weary, heavy laden. Here again are the words. Come to me, all who are labor, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So anyway, uh, there, there is much more to this, but I just was really, really blessed <clears throat> by this and by Devin's writing. And just wanted to encourage you, if you want to read more, there's a lot more. There's a lot more, and it's all good. And I just wanted to um, encourage you to check out the links that I'm going to be putting into the video description. So, and let me go ahead and get back to my other screen here. Um, so, anyway, um, I just hope that encourages you and just, just want you to know you're on my heart and in my, in my prayers and um, just really praying for all of you to, you know, hang, hang in there. This is not going to last forever. And, you know, trust the Lord. He is going to get us through this and um, things are going to get back to normal eventually. So I do have, um, okay. And I think on that note, I'm just going to go ahead and, and sign off for now and just wish you a wonderful week and Lord willing, look forward to seeing you next Friday. Hopefully no more glitches, but anyway, God bless. Take care. Bye.